Hi class, in chapter one we will be focusing on factors, multiples, primes, and composites. To start off lesson 1.1 we will be looking at factors and multiples. In lesson 1.2 we will be looking at physical models of factors and multiples. 1.3 we will investigate prime and composite numbers and we will finish off chapter one by investigating divisibility rules. In Lesson 1.1, our learning targets will be listing factor pairs of numbers and relating factors, multiples, and divisibility. Uh, keep an eye out for these key terms in Lesson 1.1, array, factor pair, factor, the commutative property of multiplication, distinct factors, perfect squares, multiple, and divisible. Let's take a look at the top of page four and problem number one, Kenya's rings. It says that Kenya has a collection of 18 rings and she wants to store them in a box. She uses an array that groups her collection into two rows with each row having nine rings. An array is a rectangular arrangement that has an equal number of objects in each row and an equal number of objects in each column. If we take a look at number one, it says use tiles to represent Kenya's 18 rings. Arrange the tiles to create other arrays. What I would like you to do is letters A through D with your group members. I'll give you a couple minutes to complete that. Go ahead. If we take a look at letter A, the possible arrays that you could have created were nine rows of two, one row of 18, 18 rows of 1, 3 rows of 6, or 6 rows of 3. For letter B, the math operations uh, that you were probably thinking about were multiplying and dividing. In explaining your reasoning for letter C, yes, the arrays with two rings in a column or row would be 2 by 9 and 9 by 2. And yes, the arrays with three rings in a column or row would be three by six or six by three. For letter D, you know when you have determined all the arrays for a number when there are no other numbers that divide into that number evenly or when there are no other numbers that you can multiply together to get that number. If we look at the top of page five, it says that Kenya notices that the number of rings she used in her rows and columns are the same as the factor pairs of 18. A factor pair is two natural numbers other than zero that are multiplied together to produce another number. Each number in a factor pair is a factor of the product. If we take a look at number two, it says think about all the factor pairs that could be used to group Kenya's 18 rings. Go ahead and do letters A through D with your group members. If we take a look at letter A, all of the factor pairs that can be used to group Kenya's rings are 1 and 18, 2 and 9, 3 and 6, 6 and 3, 9 and 2, and 18 and 1. For letter B, how are the arrays that you created in question 1 related to the factor pairs that you just listed? The factor pairs are going to represent the rows and columns that made up the arrays in question 1. Letter C, again, you are using multiplication and division to determine the factor pairs. And for letter D, you can determine which numbers divide evenly into 18 and which numbers that you can multiply together that result in a product of 18. If we take a look at the bottom of page 5, it says that Kenya notices that the array of two rows of nine rings is different from the array of nine rows of two rings. However, when she multiplies the factor pairs for these groupings, the product is the same. In a multiplication sentence, this means 2 times 9 is equal to 9 times 2. The factor pair of 9 and 2 is equal to the factor pair of 2 and 9. This is an example of a very important property called the commutative property of multiplication. The commutative property of multiplication states that changing the order of two or more factors does not change the product. For any numbers a and b, a times b will be equal to b times a. 
and I want you to remember, take a look at your crew member here, they are going to have important information as we go through the textbook uh, that they are going to give you based on the topic that you are learning. Let's turn over to page six. We are going to skip number three and number four. Mr. Rubenstein asked the class to write all of the distinct factors that appear in Kenya's arrays for the number 18. Distinct factors are factors that appear only once in a list. So based off of that definition, go ahead and answer number five and number six with your group members. If we take a look at number five, the distinct factors of 18 are 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, and 18. For number six, how are factors different from factor pairs? Factors are the divisors of a product. Factor pairs are the factors that, when multiplied together, result in a specific product. If we take a look at number seven, it says Aaron lists all the factor pairs for the number 20. He writes one and 20, 20 and one, two and 10, 10 and two, four and five, and five and four. Aaron claims that the number 20 has 12 distinct factors. Abdul does not agree with Aaron's answer. He claims that the number 20 has six distinct factors. Who is correct and explain how you determined your answer. Go ahead and discuss and answer number seven with your group members. In problem number seven, Abdul is indeed correct. There are six distinct factors. Aaron is confusing factor pairs with distinct factors. He is counting each distinct factor two times. If we take a look at number eight on the bottom of page six, Marcus noticed that when he listed the distinct factors of a number in order from least to greatest and connected the factor pairs, he could create a rainbow. Marcus drew this picture. For letter A, it says list all of the distinct factors of 20 using Marcus's method. So go ahead and do 8A with your group members. Here is what your rainbow diagram should look like for 8A. We have 1 and 20, 2 and 10, and 4 and 5. Those are all the distinct factors of 20, and Marcus creating a rainbow diagram to demonstrate that. If we take a look at the top of page 7, uh, for letter B, let's again practice one more problem with rainbow diagrams. It says to list all of the distinct factors of 24 and create a rainbow diagram with the factor pairs. Go ahead and do that with your group members. Here is what your rainbow diagram should look like for letter B. The distinct factors of 24, you have 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, and 4 and 6. If we take a look at number 9, Bryn wrote all the distinct factors for 36 in order from least to greatest. She connected the factor pairs and drew this picture. She noticed that 6 did not have a partner. Go ahead and answer number 9A with your group members. Why do you think 6 does not have a partner? When creating this rainbow diagram, 6 does not have a partner because it multiplies by itself to get a product of 36. So that's why you only see it listed one time in the rainbow diagram. Let's look at the top of page 8. It says that a number that is the product of a distinct factor multiplied by itself is called a perfect square. The number 36 is a perfect square because 6 is a distinct factor of 36 and 6 times 6 is equal to 36. Take a look at our crew member here on the right and he states that that means that if a distinct factor of a number doesn't have a partner, then that number is going to be a perfect square. So always remember that based off of this word bubble. Number 10 says to choose another perfect square number, so go ahead and do that with your group members and answer letters A, B, and C. If we take a look at letter A, we are going to choose 25 for the perfect square number. Uh, for letter B then, there are the factors listed in order from least to greatest, 1, 5, and 25, and the rainbow diagram that shows the factor pairs. 
and you can see then that 5 for letter C, 5 is going to multiply by itself. So that's why it is listed only once in the rainbow diagram. We are going to skip problem 2, so let's move over to problem 3 on page 12, exploring multiples. Number 1 says that buy right produce and vitamins store sells juice cartons. Each carton contains 12 cans of orange juice. Go ahead and answer letters A, B, and C with your group members based off of that problem situation. If we take a look at letter A, if you're going to buy one carton, you will have 12 cans of juice. For letter B, two cartons, you will have 24 cans of juice. And for letter C, seven cartons, you will have 84 cans of juice. Number two says, how did you determine how many cans of juice you would have if you bought one carton of juice, two cartons of juice, or seven cartons of juice? And number three says, how does the number 12 relate to the total number of cans of juice? Explain your reasoning. Go ahead and answer question two and three with your group members. For number two, you multiply the number of cartons by 12 because you know that there are 12 cans in each carton. For number three, 12 is a factor of each of the total numbers of cans because 12 is the number of cans in one carton. You must multiply 12 by the number of cartons to get the product of 12, 24, or 84, depending on the number of cartons. Therefore, 12 is a factor of each product. Let's turn to the top of page 13 and finish up lesson 1.1 for today. It says, when you multiply 12 by any other number, you get a multiple of 12. A multiple is the product of a given whole number and another whole number. So go ahead and answer number 4, number 5, and number 6 with your group members. If we take a look at number 4, Three possible multiples of 12 are 12, 24, and 36. Those are actually going to be the first three multiples of 12. Uh, if we look at number 5, no, you cannot buy exactly 54 juice cans because 54 is not a multiple of 12. If we take a look at number 6, you need to purchase 16 cartons if you want to purchase 192 juice cans, you are going to divide 192 by 12 in order to determine that you are going to need 16 cartons. That's going to be it for Lesson 1.1 on factors and multiples. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.